Miss Holshue, you claim your mother had an affair with the defendant's father, and today you're in court to prove that he is your biological father. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Miss Howard, you and your sisters say Miss Holshue is a delusional troublemaker whose promiscuous mother destroyed your family and ruined your home. You say Miss Holshue is dragging your father's name through the mud, and there is absolutely no way she is related to you. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. So, Miss Holshue, why do you believe you're related to the Howards? Um, because my mother and Mr. Howard both told me that he was my father and also family members on his side of the family have also said that I'm his daughter. And, and you... also I'm in the obituary as his daughter. You are? Yes, I am, ma'am. That was a big mistake that her name was put into the obituary. Our father's sister did that. No. And did not tell any of us about it. Our father didn't even mention her. Nope. That's so why would she be put in the obituary if no one ever mentioned her or knew about her? Our father's sister and her mother were best friends. And she, our aunt, is the one that told her that she is possibly might be related to us. That's not true, Your Honor. That is true. No, it's not. What? I had a relationship with Mr. Howard. No. No. Um, no. Through the years after I found out that he was my father. And the only reason no. I'm even wanting to know that he is my father is because I, I've recently learned that I have terminal cancer and I'd like to have family history. And I also, which I know they don't want to, but I would also like to have some sort of information from them mm -mm. about sure. him. When did you first find out? Whenever about I was this? about 12 or 13. How did you find out? Because <laughs> my stepdad was drunk and um, he was fighting with my mother and he said, Well, who do you think your father is? And so after that, my mother told me and um, she took me and introduced me to DL and uh, we had a relationship from then on. What would you like exactly. to add? Your Honor, first and foremost, I just want to say, I mean, I, I don't get me wrong, I, I feel for her that she has cancer, but there's kids out there that have been adopted that have cancer that have no idea about anything of their family history. I get it, the doctors ask family history, but that's not gonna cure her because she knows Nobody that. said it was just gonna no, cure I'm, me. I'm talking, I'm talking. So? I'm talking. But what she's saying name. is, if she is going to leave this world, there are unanswered questions in her mind and in her life. That's why we're here. That she'd like to get answers to. That's why we're here That's today, Your Honor. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I, and, That's you know... Why we're here. Thank you. And I, I mean, you know, to the Howard sisters, growing up, did you ever hear about Miss Holshue? No. Never heard no. her. Did anyone no. ever mention her? No. Never. 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 Yes. One time, one time when I was 19 years old, my dad, he was uh, in from California. My parents were already divorced. We were in from California. He had us all meet him out at a, an old country bar. We showed up, and that and her mother was there. That? And I'm talking. They You're were, saying they, that person? Yeah, yes. Okay. They, they were there. And after about a half hour, we had some drinks and stuff on my dad. I don't even we, remember I that. Am, and she's lying, don't. and I'm not a that. If anybody's I, a that, look whatever over the there. Whatever the case may be. Whatever the case may be. Whatever the case You know, what's may the be? big deal if I'm, he is I'm my talking. father? So what? I'm I can, talking to I can too. care less if what's he is. What's the big I deal? Can I my father? Is it? All right, ladies, one at a time. It's not hurting let you can if, I, if he is my father. Wait, one at a time because I want to hear this story. All of a sudden, you are brought into contact with Miss Holshue. Yes. How old were you all when I, this meeting happened? I was 19 at the time. So you remember this day? Oh, uh, with clearly, like it was yesterday. They were sitting in a booth with my dad across from her and her mother. I was standing at the end and he said, uh, I just brought you guys here to let you know that she's your sister. Really? And that was the one and only time that my dad ever mentioned her till the day he died. He had never ever. mentioned it to any of the rest of us. So your dad said it to you? Yes. Your Honor, I lived so, with my... Wait a minute, if he told you, why don't you believe it? I don't want to speak ill, but I mean, my dad was, he's dead. Her mother has passed away. It's obvious my dad messed around on my mom. It wasn't just her mother. Exactly. He was, it was never just I her agree mother. I that one. And I have heard many things that say the same thing about her mother. You okay, so you what you're just... saying is he said that, but you felt like you had information that suggested her mother 
also yes. slept around yes. frequently. Mm -hmm. We'll yes. say that respectfully. And yes. so it was your conclusion that even though my dad said this, it doesn't mean it's necessarily true. That is absolutely correct. When I was 17, I had moved to California to live with my father. I flew out with her younger sister. I lived there for quite a while and her name was never ever mentioned to me. From her mother, from my father, no one. And ever. just to be clear, your mother and father were married. Correct. Yes. Yes. And you share the same mother and father. Yes, Correct. all five of us. When, can I also say when I was in California living with my father, we had packed up our things and moved out because my father had gone to where, at the bar where her mother was working and caught her cheating on him. That gave me no topic, uh, the thought that obviously her mother probably has no idea who any of her children belong to. Really? It's not my fault you guys don't want to know me. It's not my fault that your dad had sex with my mother and I was, I'm a product of that. And it's not our fault that they both did it either. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Miss Holshue? Yes. Your mother never told you there were any other possibilities? Let me tell you this story. My mother married the person I thought was my biological dad when she was 14. Her and, her and Mr. Howard were childhood sweethearts. Okay, my mother didn't have me until she was 20 days before she turned 21. And she was married to the same man all that time. So what you're saying is your mom married very young. Oh, yes. Okay. But she and Mr. Howard, the deceased, their father, yes. they were still in a relationship because they were childhood sweethearts. Lies. They were in and out of a relationship. No, they no, weren't. As no, long they as weren't. I could. No, they weren't. No, they were as long not. as I knew. Our father was with us every weekend. Every weekend. She's just coming in like a big old bulldozer. My maintenance man in my building was my father's childhood friend. He and I had a chat recently and we chatted for quite some time. I do know that she thinks that she's our sister. So I asked him and he said, no, he's my mother was the only woman that my dad at that time early in. The so you never heard any rumors about your father cheating. Oh. When we got older. Right. When we were as older. Teenagers. Right. As teenagers. Only as teenagers. When you say she's just trying to insert herself into our family. Yes. Why? What's her motive? You obviously exactly. don't our want her there. Our sister is very good friends with her, and she wants her to be her sister. And we told her to prove it if she's our sister, and she kept denying, refusing to do a DNA. Well, that's why we're here today, and actually, Kelly, your sister, is here as yeah. well. Ron, can you please escort their sister, Kelly, into the courtroom? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. I'm gonna come in and sit up in the witness stand up here. Hello, Ms. Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ms. Holshue contends that she shares a father with you and your sisters? Yes. And your sisters say, oh, no, she doesn't. That's their opinion. What is your opinion? I believe that she is. You do? Tell yes, the court why. Because my father told me that she was. She just needs a family, Your Honor, because her whole family, she's see. shut out. They've shut her no, out I've because she's such a no, devil. Tell me about that moment when you were informed or your father told you. Well, we were out one day, and I was about 19, and he said that he wanted me to meet one of his girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had met several of them before. I thought you said you were seven. No big deal. So we go to Lynn's mother's. He introduces me to her as my sister. So we just went about our way after that, and I just took it as for what it was and just... You never questioned it? No. Our dad never lied to us. You know, your sisters actually admit that your dad said to them, this is your sister, but yes. they don't believe it because they felt like Miss Holshue's mother had been sleeping around, had yes. a reputation. Yes. And As so they did didn't he. believe it. As did he. Oh, That's we don't. Our, 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 our dad is all of our heroes. That our father slept around. He, he is our hero to this day. And I'm not going to bash him, but yes, he loved women. And that's just the way it was. Some men hunt, some men don't. <laughs> okay, well said.
Uh, now, your sisters seem to think that Miss Holshue's just trying to stir the pot. She's trying to get into your family. You your two honor. are best friends, and no, you we're all friends. want we're not to be friends. sisters, and this is their theory. Your oh, honor. Of course, they have all kinds of theories. That's Kelly, you've been blacklisted on a family since you've been 14 years old. That's and what why are you, you need today? her in your life. What are you two today? We're everything. Oh, I see that. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even speak to these two, number one. I think no, we, we don't, don't speak saying, to you. Okay. <laughs> they don't speak to me. So do you think your acceptance of Miss Holshue affected your relationship with your sisters negatively? No. Do they, so do they, do they them. ostracize I don't know. you because you accepted them? I have no them. idea. That's up to her what she does. I still speak with Kelly on a daily basis, as I do with my other sisters. Right. I just mm -hmm. am tired of hearing about this. Your Honor, Mr. Howard invited me to a Howard family reunion. Lies. That is a Lies. total lie. It was Lies. at Guilford Lake. That Lies. is a total lie. Because you know where it was doesn't mean you were there invited. There was never there was a family never reunion at Guilford Lake. Yeah. It was not at Guilford yeah. Lake. Yeah. It was yeah. at the reunion. Yeah. It was yeah. outside yeah. of Guilford yeah. Lake. How does she know where the reunion is if she wasn't invited or someone didn't tell her? And I wasn't in town. Your Honor, Thank I you. have been to every single family reunion. And I have and been she to... Has never been Is there. it held at that location? I'm sure that she has this information because she's gotten it from my other sister. I was. Yeah, Kelly was, was not even in town. I, Kelly was I, not, I didn't know that. She was never at a family reunion. She's told you that now. She's never been to a family reunion. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Miss Holshue, did you actually go to the family reunion? Yes, Your Honor, I did. My first husband... Hold on. Yes, Your Honor, my first husband and I went there... We walked into the pavilion and sat down with Lies. D.L. and started talking to him, and I don't remember which women it was, but chased me out, calling me oh, all these nasty things. I never when she her once in my life. They wanted to beat me up. She's lying. Oh, my God. I heard this wow. story. If we wanted asked, to beat you up, we would have done it. And I asked questions. You did it That's because right. your dad stopped I would have done Listen, no. listen, listen. I know one thing. You all might not be... Sisters, but you're acting like it mm -hmm. in this courtroom today. You are. You are. Your Honor, the first time I laid eyes on this lady was when she was sitting in the front row of my father's funeral. Yep. I was not. She in the bulldozed front row. in. Yep. Nobody asked her to come. I'm we his didn't daughter. even know she was. When you say she not. bulldozed in, no, what, what, you, what yeah, do you mean? What did she, she push her way through? Row. Like she was supposed to be there or something. Right? No, we had no idea I, I, who I she don't even remember was. It, Your Honor, mm -hmm. I hope that it's true that he is my father. <clears throat> but if he's not, it's... that'd be happy days. <clears throat> they both lied to me. Him and my mother. I don't think did they teach you well? They don't know. They don't know. They don't do DNA with their eyeballs. Do you all want to get these results? Yes, yes. Yes. yes, yes. You all want to sit down. Yes. yes. Finally, finally, finally. You'd like to stand yes. with Miss Holsh? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. I'm a pretender. <laughs> Ron, I'm ready for the audience. <laughs> Kelly, Diana, Chrisanne, and Ray Howard, you share the same father. And so, because there wasn't a blood card available to test the DNA of the deceased David Howard, we performed a siblingship test in order to determine if Misty Lynn Holshue is the sister of Diana Howard. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Holshue versus Howard. It has been determined by this court that the probability of half siblingship between Diana Howard and Misty Lynn Holshue is 98.1%. Ah! Yeah! I knew it. I Sorry. I'm glad she knows, Your Honor, but it doesn't make a difference. I, I'm glad she does, too. You know, it's very sad from where I sit to see this venom. I have no problem with them. It's them. They hate me. <laughs> I have no problem whatsoever with them women. Listen, Nobody ever, listen. I've never spoken to her. The so DNA, listen, the no. DNA has spoken. You are, in fact, half-siblings, siblings, siblings 
And I'm about putting families back together. That's what we do in this courtroom. Well, never but there are instances that. where I look at the people place. before me and I realize maybe there's just too much water under the bridge right mm -hmm. now. Definitely. You all stood over there today and acted like some bad remake of Mean Girls. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, just mean, just vicious. Mm -hmm. All this puffed up nonsense you all are doing in here, I don't believe a minute of it. Somewhere along the way, you all lost your footing at being sisters. You know, my grandmother used to have a saying where she'd say, be careful how you treat folks, because they may be the one to give you your last cup of water. You never know in this life, when everyone else is gone, who will be there. More often than not, it's your sibling. Ms. Patterson, you have petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Rothwell, that he is the father of your one-year-old daughter, Jade. Yes, Your Honor. You claim he abandoned you, stuck you with bills, and now your parents are forced to help you raise your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. But after today's DNA results, he will pay. You're right, Your Honor. You're suing him for $6,423.45 for child-rearing expenses, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Rothwell, you say Ms. Patterson has her parents fooled into believing she's not a cheater, and you refuse to be the fool for taking care of a child that's not yours. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Ms. Patterson, does Mr. Rothwell have any reason to deny your No, daughter. Your Honor, and today I will prove that he is the father. I'm tired of doing everything by myself. Wow. I had to rely on my parents to do everything or help me when we both made this child. So he should step up and do what he has to do. For what child? That's not my baby. Okay. okay. I guess. Not my baby. I guess. At all. It is. Take it's me fun. back. Let me understand the nature of this relationship. We when? met in high school in 2009. We both graduated from the same high school. We met in 2011, like rekindled through a mutual friend. We started dating on and off because he's a cheater, so I can't stay yeah, with I'm a, a cheater. cheater. You're a cheater. So I got pregnant in 2013 in September. So wait, this relationship, you said you were dating on and off. On and off, yeah. Were you in a committed relationship at some point? Yeah, I was always committed to him. He wasn't committed to me. That's what it was. <laughs> Mr. Rothwell, committed. in your opinion, were you in a committed relationship with Ms. Patterson? Yes, ma'am. You're yes, a liar. Ma you were. Did you do a lot of cheating? Uh, no. Yes, no, he yeah. did. Me? A lot of cheating. What about you? What proof do you have? What proof do you have? I, have I, never, I have never cheated on him. No. Never. At what point did you find out you're pregnant? In 2013, when we were on a trip for my birthday. I didn't, you know, didn't, you know, have my regular monthly. So we took a pregnancy test, and I could see in his eyes that he was scared. So he yeah, made I'm up some ready. excuse when we came back from this trip. We got into a big argument. And, you know, so I didn't see him until December. But he, all through this time, he's telling me, you know, that's not my baby. It's not. And then all of a it's sudden, not. in December, you said, I'm going to step up and do what I have to do. No. It's just well, not right. No. And I feel like, you know, today, we're going to prove that he is the father. And if he doesn't do what he has to do, I will put him on child support. No, not at all. Not me. And so... No. I ain't going to pay child support for a child that's not mine. You say you met in high school. Yes. And what was his relationship with your family? We, we really didn't have a Your relationship, Honor. but, you know, my family did take him up, take him in like a family. I did. You know, we we like, treated was, him like he was family. Was just, you know, he just, sold me false dreams, telling he was going to marry me, we have kids, I mean, be happy. All right, now, Mr. Rothwell, you had a great relationship with Miss Patterson and her family? Yes, Your Honor. They did take you in? They did take me in, but that was their decision. <laughs> now, I didn't go there and say, hey, you what? Know, can you take me in, you know, crawl into their door? When you say... Hold on, when, when you say take you in, did you actually live with them or meaning they accepted you? He like, lived with us. It was he both. lived with us. But I didn't want him to. We it clothed him, you know, but... we bathed him, fed him, treated okay, him. My mom treated him like decision. a son. She was claiming him as a son in law, and I don't have a ring on my finger. All right, I want to hear from your parents. Uh, please stand. He's a deadbeat. I'm sorry. Deadbeat? Oh, really? He's a deadbeat. His no. daughter called me daddy. It's a shame. And I'm so this mad. Mr. So Copeland, I can see mind. you're very angry. You feel like he has not stepped up to the plate whatsoever? Not at all. Not at all. Well, not explain all. to the court. If you look at this baby, man, you know it's your baby. You I just said yeah, There's no you comparison just said, He's a sad person. He's sad. I can't call him Mr. Nothing. Like me, 
There's no resemblance. No, I can't, yeah, look, I can't even say like Mary's like twin. That's his twin. That's, look at she her. Look, now. She looks look just at her. Like, she looks just she like his mouth like and all. She doesn't. The only thing is different is she's brown skin. And you, you, no, you are so no stupid, man. You're losing a lot of great things in life. You're about, well, to, let it my baby. There's no about to let it pass you right back. And so, Ms. Gardner and Mr. Copeland, you, admittedly, they're saying that you took in Mr. Rothwell. I you... didn't want to, because I don't believe in taking care of no grown men. But he lost his job, and he got a, his, he's the father of my grandbaby. So I'm not the type of person that's gonna let him be out in the street. I even gave him money to go get him the gas to, I mean, so he could find him decision, a new though. job. I didn't ask for you know what I'm that. saying? I didn't ask for him. But he didn't ask me heart. for it, and I didn't ask for decision. it back. I told him, I want you to do All I want you to do is get a job and take care of your responsibility, man. That's all you need to do. You don't owe me anything. Just do what you need to do. So let me understand this. Ms. Patterson and Mr. Rothwell met when they were in high school. Yes. Yes. You began to form a relationship, a bond. At what point do you take him in and he starts living with you? When I got pregnant, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> when you found out you were pregnant, then you take him in. Yes. So, Mr. Rothwell, did you participate in the doctor's appointments? Yes, the I birth? actually have those pictures. I have doctor's appointments pictures, and he Is was that there evidence the you brought today? Yeah. I'd like to see that. Jerome, will you hand that to me, please? He was there through the birth. He cut her a bill oh, yeah, court, and there. he even signed yeah, the birth certificate. So if I he wasn't the father, reason. why'd you sign the birth certificate? I mean, that's yeah, who does I'm that? Not... Who does that? If you are not the father, why you sign the birth certificate? Well, cause at the time... T today, you're gonna learn that you're the father, man. Uh -huh. You're gonna learn today. These are pictures of, explain to me, this first picture the is The first picture of... is actually, we left a doctor's appointment and I was actually, that day, I was on my way to the hospital to get induced. And he was there. And then the and next picture happy. is... Nah. My, the second picture, oh. that is at my baby shower. I mean, I'm a, I'm a good guy. You can clearly see that, but when it comes to a child, that's a different story. So well, I'm not sure you're you a good guy now. Why you his shirt Jay's daddy? Baby. His shirt right there says Jay's daddy, which is her name. Were you thinking in your mind, this is my child, I at, don't have a doubt? Yes, Your Honor. At that particular time, from the time she got pregnant and then up until the day she was born, I was there. But then at the same time, as we started, you know, me and the baby started to try to bond, you know, she kept crying, kept hollering and screaming. You That's didn't what try. babies do. You I mean, try. I understand that. You didn't try. He didn't try. No. So, what is this last picture, Miss? That is at the hospital. That's at the hospital. And this is him holding? Yes, that's her. Jay. Holding her. Yes. And... You look happy. I mean, yeah, I mean, at the time, yeah. But then after, as time went on, you know, we was, you know, we started following out. But not only that, when it comes to the baby, you know, I mean, I understand babies cry, yes, that's what all babies do, but there still should be some type of bond with the father. You didn't the try to make a bond. So yeah. let me be clear. You were there for the birth, Mr. Rothwell. Yes, Your Honor. You signed the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. So you acknowledged you were the father on that day. Yes, Your Honor. So now, why change now? Now, what happens after you come home from the hospital with the baby. A month after I, I came home with her, he was there, and then on his birthday, July 7th, he wants to disappear, and at, like, midnight, I get a text from him saying he's, he don't want to be there anymore because this baby doesn't look like him. Exactly. And to get out he of doesn't there. have a bond. But what you can't make saying? a bond with someone if you're not trying. You were still okay, living it. at home with your parents. No, we had an apartment. You did? Yes, me and him had an apartment. And then I had to, we had to break our lease because we broke up. I had to move back in with my parents because I can't raise my daughter by myself. Maybe but I feel like he cared more about that dang old truck that he got. Yes, Ooh. indeed. What, okay, more than my, my child. Look what this, truck is this? Look, look at this truck he has. Please, I got okay, evidence. Will you That's show me? Truck. I mean, this, why does this, it matter? Will you hand me that evidence? It, it's That's not on your honor. truck. I, I went in half on that truck, and nah, the repo man will come money. get it if you don't step up. It was today, my money. Right? I went from like. talking about a baby to talking about a truck? Yes. Because he won't do nothing for my granddad. What is this truck? It's my money. Look at it. Look at it. He all washes all nice. He got stereos in it. That's right. That's my decision. He hugged his truck more than he threw my daughter. That ain't my child. So I'm not going to take part in it. And he's an electrician junkie, so he likes all the new latest electronics, like iPads, all So what are you saying? You're saying that 
he gives but you're this supposed to be taking care truck of truck no. more no. time, no. time no. care, no. and attention yes. than, than he does the baby. Than right. anybody. Than his Your own honor. self. He care for his truck more than so he do on. himself. If they can't I bet you he washes his truck more than he do himself. Wait a minute. Because oh. he's <laughs> dirty. No. He is no, dirty. Not Wait a minute. If you can't afford an apartment, how do you afford a truck? Because she had went in half Because I went in half in on the truck. So once... Okay, but that was my money, too. We both, we went, both half went half, half in on the truck. Right. But then I have another car also, so I let him just have that truck because I didn't want to hear nah, his mouth. Yeah. I actually was at a, at a stop, like me and my cousin. He pulled up. I see he got these lights shining on the bottom. I see what's all on the inside. I'm hearing all this music. I'm like, this guy ain't did nothing for my grandbaby. So me and my cousin, we following. And what, I followed him to where he parked the car. I waited a couple of hours. I got the car. And look at that. Look at the lights on it. The lights on the inside, lights on the... Yeah, it. I'm mom. like, wow. So, you ain't did nothing for my grandbaby and I oh, see about $3,000 worth of stuff in this car. So I that's took his money. car and I took it to my house. And see, I'm a mechanic. I told him, you got to come see your daughter. Yeah, I'll give you your keys. So he think he come see his daughter. I give him the keys. He going to be able to pull off. Right. Psych, I, right. I took him. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. So yeah, he, he, he got he, he got real nice. Me and this guy used to go out At all. That fishing. Right. We used to drink beers and stuff together. I mean, he was like actually my son. I mean, it's and nine, yeah. I'm like I'm 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 like so frustrated. I took his truck. Matter. So I when he came, see how frustrated when he came you are. when he came over, he he was real nice to my daughter, to everybody. Yeah, that's for two good. days. That's what I love on the third you day, know. I'm thinking he's gonna be back. On the third day, I put his truck back together, told him, yeah, you can start it. You and see, he you disappeared. See how they do for over he yeah. took yeah. and didn't never. Right. I, I, my right. daughter so loved wait, him. So wait, you rigged the truck so he couldn't drive it. Yeah. So he had to come back home. So he, so he played, he he played nice for two days, mm -hmm. and then he left. Mm -hmm. right. Mr. Rothwell, did you just leave on the third day? Yes, Your Honor. After the truck started? Yes, Your Honor. Why? I mean, I... Uh, why, 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 to no, wait a minute. Let up. him speak. I'm trying to understand how a young man can do this to not just a child, but a family that's done so much for him. Why would you just why? leave on the third day and not come back? I mean, it was their decision to take me in. They didn't have to, but time they did that out of the time. Zero. Kind of set their heart. No but time at the with same time, when it comes to a child, you know, I just felt like, you know, there's no connection. Where did this doubt set in? Well, the reason why the doubts came in, say, in place was because one, my friend said that he seen her with another guy. It all, you know, came together. Like, so you, you know, felt like all these puzzle pieces came together, came together and, and that's and, and, why the child didn't look like you and that's why you weren't bonding because something fishy was going on back during the window of conception. Yes, Ron. What else? The baby, she doesn't look like me at all. You don't a think the baby looks me. like you? She's short to be a one-year-old. Her hair's a lot bigger than mine. Really? You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Stupid. So you don't feel like there's any resemblance? At all. And what else? And I don't feel a connection at all. I need more evidence that you feel Miss Patterson was cheating. Because, for one, my friend said he saw her. So, and I'm okay. going to believe him. Okay, and then girl. what else? And then not only that, I've seen Facebook messages, the different What did guys. the Facebook messages say? That, I mean, it was just a random guy just in her inbox. Hey, what's up? Can I come over? I mean, it was Do just a whole list. Do I ever respond? Yeah, can I say Do something? Do I respond to it's clear that she's so wait, too. So wait, wait, wait. Now I'm getting somewhere. So when you saw these messages, did they date back to the time period when Jade was conceived? It was in the same time. And then she even just admitted it that she talking about some do I respond. So that's I, clearly safe Honor, that she I've was talking about. So you're I saying that validates the messages. fact that there were the messages. Miss Patterson, I have to ask you. So did you have different guys messaging I mean, you that's on what Facebook? Facebook is. Some guys see your picture, you say, How are you doing? I don't respond to that. So I don't, don't know that. down like that. Do you remember this encounter yeah, with you in the it. truck with someone? No. What truck? What is he talking He's about? He's saying his old truck. So he had it with him. She don't know. How? See? And when I found out about the Facebook messages, you know, I was like, as time went on, I'm like, well, you know, it's all coming together now, you know, from her cheating, and then, it's all you know, my friend, talking about he saw her with another guy. So, ultimately, we're here for one reason, to get the results so we can figure out how yes. to move forward. And yes. if he is yes. the father... Yes. ...you all have to talk together. You can't just talk over one another. Yes. And I will to co Is this, Miss Patterson, this is the only child you have? No, I have another child, Your Honor. You do? Yes, Your Honor. Older or younger than She's Jay? She's older than her. She's four years old. And he's not the father? No, he's not the father. Nope.
But when we were together, he took her in like he, she was his. Did so you've established a bond with her older child, too. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. He'll come get her, take her to the park, but then just leave Jade there. It's not right. It's not right. I mean, and Jay's your biological child. No. And see, you're just leaving her in, in the dark. He's my child. Ms. Patterson, yes, you're Your suing for how much? Uh, I'm suing for $6,423.45. They are credible expenses, but I cannot rule on your suit until I get the results. That's fine. All right? With that said, I think it's time to get some answers. Jerome? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Patterson versus Rothwell, pertaining to one-year-old Jade Rothwell, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Rothwell, you are the father. I told you. You're stupid, don't I told you. You owe my child an apology. You owe my child an apology. You owe my child an apology. Anthony, and you owe my family an apology. Anthony, I think for putting you us through this. Up and be, uh, be the man that you possibly can be and be a good father, hopefully. Wow. You're the Mr. Daddy. Rothwell, do you now understand the responsibility you have to this child? Yes, Your Honor. In my mind, I was thinking to myself, oh, Lord, they saying he's the father, but this child is a mess. I don't even know. <laughs> What he's gonna do if he is the father? Then I heard them testify that you come and get the older child and you actually have a bond with the older child that you maintain. So that let me know you have it in you. Now that your doubts have been cleared, I want you to do the right thing by Jade. Yes, sir. With respect to your suit, now that it has been determined that Mr. Rothwell is in fact the biological father of a beautiful Jade, you are entitled to half of those childcare expenses you've incurred thus far. You came in saying you had spent $6,423.45 in childcare expenses, and so therefore you are entitled to half of that amount, $3,211.73, judgment for the plaintiff. Miss Seaton, you've brought your mother to court because you claim she committed paternity fraud and lied to you about the identity of your biological father. You were raised believing one man was your father, but are here to prove another is your dad. You've petitioned the court for a paternity test to finally prove the truth. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. McPeak, you say you're positive Mr. Bryson is not your daughter's biological father and your ex-husband Mr. Jesse Seaton is, and you plan to prove it today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Seaton, how do we get to this point? Well, Your Honor, um, I just want to start by saying I haven't seen or talked to this woman in five years, almost, almost five years. Um, the reason that I haven't seen or talked to her in, in almost five years is because she's a liar. I was raised to think that a man named Jesse Seaton was my biological father. Uh, he signed my birth certificate, he cut my umbilical cord, and he, he, was, he was awesome. I have since found out that um, there was another possibility that Mr. Bryson could be my father. Ms. McPeak, your daughter says she can't even have a relationship with you because you're a liar. Is that true? My daughter doesn't care who she hurts at all. She's a very cold-hearted person, and she just does not care who she hurts. Have you lied to her about her father? No. They could have had um, DNA when, she, when I had her, but Jesse and them all didn't want DNA. So, evidently, he must have thought he was the father because he didn't want no DNA. So you're saying your daughter's assertions just aren't true? No, not at all. And I can feel the tension between the both of you. It's like neither one of you have looked at the other one. And your mother and daughter haven't seen each other or spoken in five years? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your All Honor. because of a paternity issue? Yes, ma'am. Wow. So, how did you find out about Mr. Bryson at all? How did it ever come up? Um, back in 2011, 
um, I had complications and I needed a blood transfusion. My mom was supposed to make it to the hospital. She never showed up, whatever the reason was. So my grandmother and my uncle Paul had both donated blood for the blood transfusion and it came out that they were not, either one of them wasn't a match. So they couldn't give me the blood. Why do you look like she's not telling the truth, Miss McPeak? It's untrue. How do you respond? Because she's a liar. She always has been. She does whatever she can to hurt anybody. She doesn't have a heart at all. Oh. But is she lying about the hospital saying there's not yes. a match? Yes, she is. Liar. Uh, <laughs> Your Honor, I would just like to say uh, my grandmother did submit a statement if you would like to look over that. Let me look through my court file and let's go to the statement from your grandmother. It reads, I know my late son Jesse Seaton is not Jessica's father. Everyone in town knows that Teresa was with Greg while she was pregnant. I don't know why Teresa keeps denying it. I couldn't go years without telling Jessica who her real father was which is Greg. When my son Jesse started dating Teresa, she was already pregnant with Jessica by Greg. My hopes for Jessica are that she will finally know the truth. Statement from Karen Hutchins. Karen's never liked me. She's a, just as big a liar as her granddaughter. <laughs> Plain and simple. She never thought that I was good enough for a son. He could have had DNA at that time. And he didn't want DNA. He said he was 100% sure it was his. And ever since Jessica's been old enough to talk, maybe kindergarten, she's been nothing but an habitual liar. Oh. Wow, that is... That's just very harsh words to say about your own daughter. You think I don't hurt every day? Why would she lie about who she believes her father is? Why, why, why do you lie about that? Anything that will give Jessica attention, she will lie about. So, Jessica, can you talk to me about your relationship with Mr. Seaton? Well, uh, Jesse died when I was about seven and a half. Um, but from what I can remember, he was the perfect man, um, perfect dad. Uh, what hurts me the most is that this man died thinking that I was his only daughter. So, that right there alone hurts more than you know, the fact that I'm about to get results on whether or not Mr. Brighton or Mr. Seaton um, is my father. Um, but my mom, however, had told me uh, more than, on more than one occasion that she had DNA done between me and Mr. Seaton. She also told uh, my grandmother, Karen, and when asked about the results, um, I contacted our local um, DNA centers and um, did some research and they have no DNA on file. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. You say your mother told you your DNA test, the DNA test had been done. Yes, but Your Honor. But when you did the research, you found out that there was no test because there were no results. Yes, Your Honor. And according to Mr. Bryson, she had also told him the same thing. Did you tell... Mr. Bryson and your daughter about a DNA test, Ms. McPeak? No. Everything she just said is a lie. She, not one time ever did I tell her that we had DNA. That's a lie. Not one time ever did Greg Bryson even ask if it was his child. If I was not willing to have a DNA, I wouldn't be here today. So, Ms. McPeak, I need to ask you, how close in proximity were you intimate with both of these men? Or is it your assertion you weren't intimate with both of these men? I lived with Greg Bryson at the time. I met Jesse and we were friends. And we just started going out as friends. And it was very close in time because I had to go home and throw Greg out. And he moved right across the street from me. <laughs> So. Wait, you went home, wait, you were living with, you were living with Mr. Bryson. Yeah. And then you moved on and met Mr. Seaton. You were friends at first, then that developed into a sexual relationship. Yes, yeah, Your sure, Honor. All right. Well, I'd like to hear more from Mr. Bryson. Jerome, will you escort Mr. Gregory Bryson into the courtroom?
right up next to the judge in the witness stand. Mr. Bryson, thank you for joining us today. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple questions for you. Do you believe you are Miss Seaton's, Jessica's biological father? Yes, I can guarantee you, Your Honor. <laughs> you do? Oh, yes. Why do you believe that? Look at her. She looks like my other daughter. I guarantee you, the money I got in my pocket, she's mine. Secondly, the grandmother, Jessie's mother, told me she's between the ages of six and ten that she knew that that was my daughter, not her son's. Even though Jesse Seaton's on the first day, we gotta guarantee you I'm the girl's father because she knows it. I come home from work, middle of Thanksgiving, there's all my stuff sitting outside. It's snowing. I'd already paid the bills. Her sack words for me was I was out, Jesse was in, turned around the house and went party and walked on in her house if everybody else was out in the front yard and been, wouldn't been for people across the street, I'd had no place to stay. So you're no. saying when you came home from work, you had already paid the bills. Yeah, she set she your stuff outside. Out. Yeah, her, all my stuff was outside. Her and all of her friends told me I was out, and he was in. And people across the street let me move in. She had come over several times and told me to my face, "I am sorry that I made a mistake. Did what I did to Jesse. But this child I'm carrying belongs to you." This you guy, say Miss McPeak told Ms. you herself? Pete, yes, God is my witness. You strike me dead if I am lying. That's a sack word to me. This is your child. I've made a mistake. And I never spoke to her again after that. And it wasn't until she, this girl got older that I knew for a fact. And that's why I'm here today to prove it. I guarantee you that I ain't her father. And nobody can understand why all the years, 32 years, why I keep a lie going. You know the woman, you know the men you sleep with. Unless you're doing 10 at night, you know who the father is. <laughs> she deprived me of 32 years of being with my daughter. And I yeah. see how emotional you are about that. I see yeah, how much that upsets nothing. you. So if you knew that, then why, why didn't you pursue any avenue? As, as a man, what can you do? Nothing is like, um, as they say, it's a woman's body. If she wants you to be a father, she can force you into fatherhood. And there's nothing as a man you can do about it. You felt like since Mr. Seaton was on her birth certificate yeah, there's nothing and they do. went on about their lives, you were blocked out from really staking any claim. Right. The only way I even knew is when the grandmother told me I looked at her, I was like, yeah, I can guarantee you she's mine. Did you think you were the only one she was having? Oh, no, Your Honor. There were <laughs> several other men she had been with. I found this out later on. But, you know, it's, um... How many, how many men do, did you find out she was with? Four. Wow. But, you know, it's the kind of thing, without being rude to anybody, and anybody taking anything offensively, there are those people that need multiple men for multiple things. This young lady was one of them. <laughs> now, nothing bad to say about her. No hard feelings. I am beyond anger and, and emotions. 32 years. She deprived her. She should apologize to her for lying. She knows the woman. You know that that is my daughter. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. So, Miss Seaton claimed her mother said to her there was a DNA test no, that had no, been no, done. No, never. And you were not the biological father. That's a lie. I asked him if he wanted one uh, when he lived know. across the street. But he's right. I haven't had no contact with him, no nothing. But me being a mother, but I guess I'd have to say, if I was a father, if I thought a child was mine, why would I wait for 30-something years to even try to step into her life? That's what kind of father you'd have been. <laughs> wow. Miss Seaton, I want to ask you, have you prepared yourself, honey? Because ultimately, this is about you getting the answers you need, the answers you deserve, the clarity that I know you need to move forward. Have you prepared yourself either way? I have. And do I you have. want Mr. Bryson to be your biological father? That, that's a very emotional question. Um, like I said, Jesse's never done wrong by me. He's never treated me anything other than his baby. So it, it would be nice to know the truth. You know, I'm, 30, I'm 31 years old. I have a right to know. Stop lying. And to be in this position today and to find out that, you know, 27 years later, he's a possibility. I mean, that's just, that's as low as it can get. So, Miss Seaton, what if your mother's telling the truth? If she What is, if she's just if telling she is, the truth? I would turn to my mom and I will apologize to her on, for all the things that I have put her through regarding this situation. All right. I don't think we have anything left to do except get the truth. 
Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In order to determine paternity, we performed two tests, a relatedness DNA test, with Mr. Jesse Seaton's biological relative, his brother, Mr. Paul Seaton III, and a paternity test with Mr. Gregory Bryson. With that being said, the DNA results determine if Mr. Jesse Seaton or Mr. Bryson is the biological father. These are the results. In the case of Seton versus McPeak, when it comes to 31-year-old Jessica Seton and whether Mr. Seton or Mr. Bryson is the father, it has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Bryson. <laughs> Thank you. Where was y'all your life? You lie. I never once. Okay. <laughs> Just hug your daughter. Okay. Huh? Told you. No. You can stay with what your daughter. What did you lie? <laughs> because he had a chance to have the DNA. It doesn't matter what he had. You had a chance for 32 years to tell the truth and you chose to keep well, telling us the same lie. I believe Jesse was your father. All right, listen, let's not ruin a beautiful moment for Miss Seaton, where she finally, finally knows for certain who her biological father is. Sometimes you just gotta find the magic in all the mess. Sometimes you gotta wade through all the mess to get to the miracle. You just gotta do it. We've all been there. <laughs> Take the miracle. You're standing next to your daddy. And for 30 years, I was denied a relationship with him because of her lies. <laughs> and that's but, something... I, but, Your Honor, I'm not even hurt about that. I'm more hurt at the fact that this man died thinking I was his only daughter. You know, and listen, Miss Seaton, I, you keep repeating that and repeating that and repeating that. And I want to say this to you respectfully with love. I don't believe that's a terrible way to leave this earth, thinking you have another beautiful child. He is resting in peace. You're the one that's not at peace. And I'm not. And that's what I'm saying to you. Don't project that onto Mr. Seaton. He's in his resting place. We're trying to get your soul at rest.